So about five or six years ago, I came across an old map in the digital collection of the Library of Congress. And it's from 1562, I believe. And what I loved about this old map was that it was just absolutely filled with these fantastical, mythical creatures and beasts and sea monsters and stuff like that. And I just sort of stored it away and figured that I would paint some of these at some point in time. And over the years, I have did a few versions of this, what I call the grumpy fish. And uh, I'm revisiting the subject uh, because I was inspired by the work of Greg Crayola Simpkins recently. I found his work and it really inspired me to take another look at this type of painting, the, you know, the, the fantastical, the mythical, and really try to work on upping my, my skills when it comes to painting this type of subject matter. Now, for anyone who's interested, I'll put a link in the description to the map. It's, um, you can download it. It's uh, in the public domain, copyright free, all that good stuff. So you can use it however you like. Uh, and I think it's really fantastic. So first things first, I'm going to be painting on an illustration board. Now, this is an old piece of illustration board that I'd already painted a few practice paintings on. And... I know for a fact I could get better results with this type of subject matter if I start with a smoother surface, you know, something like a wood panel or um, a gessoed canvas that had been sanded down, masonite board, something like that. But this is totally just practice for me, and I, I don't care if there's a little texture here. It might enhance the, the effect, actually, of the skin of the fish a little bit. I'm not really looking for a final product. I'm just trying to practice and get better at this type of work. So I started out just doing a very loose sketch using a paint pen, just trying to get the general location, general shape. I, you know, I tried to study as best I could um, the time lapses that Greg Simpkins posted just to kind of see what he was actually doing in his process. And all I'll say is that, you know, one, it's just a lot of work. You know, it's just basically working the paint like crazy over and over again until you get uh, the right feeling and I think that you know in general he starts out very loose which you know I've done before you start out very very loose and then you sort of progress to a tighter stage of the work um, so I guess loose shapes and loose big blocks of color first and then sort of gradually work toward detail one technique that I did pick up from him is that he will use one brush to put paint down and then a second clean brush either dry or just damp with water to blend the edges of the paint and so that's pretty much what I'm doing here is just trying my best to build up texture create shapes and depth and pay attention to the lighting effects that might be happening on the surface that I'm working on uh, and just work it just work it over and over again until I get to a place where I feel like it's working and here I'm just using a paper towel to remove some of the excess paint and water that I had built up wanted to keep you know, the, the layers of paint fairly thin here and just continue to build them up without building up too much texture in addition to what was already on the mat board. Color is another issue. Uh, you know, I wasn't quite sure what colors to use. I debated. Um, I ended up going with this these cool tones and the white and the whole time I you know had the intentions that I was going to use like a, a thin transparent glaze over the whole thing which you'll see in a little bit and I think that turned out really well. That's another thing that Greg Simpkins does uh, quite often. So again, this is really kind of difficult for me to articulate and explain that I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just really experimenting. You know, I'm trying to just going back and forth with different colors, building up areas slowly, uh, redoing things. Um, I don't have any really good reference to work from, so I'm just making it up as I go along. Here I'm creating a, a transparent glaze um, using some transparent uh, green and yellow um, and that works fairly well. It pulls the whole piece back together and sort of gives it one single unifying tone. Um, again, I'm going to end up using probably, I'm going to end up doing waves and, and a ship and things in the background, but I just wanted to keep it black in the background for now. And I was very excited to, to start working on the eye. I debated about the color. Once again, I ended up going with this orange and yellow. Um, I kind of regret not using pink, but 
you know, this is practice. I, I need to create a bunch of these over time to get better and really level up. And so there's no wrong answer. You can, you can go with whatever color you want. So I ended up picking this uh, warm tone, which I think is a good contrast to the green tones. The eye's not finished, by the way. This is just the first layer. So now I'm going back and building up depth. And again, similar to what Simpkins does, you know, this just takes lots of time of layering and repeating. And I think the results for the eye would have been much better if the painting was larger, or at least easier if it was larger. But um, I think it was a really good first attempt for me, and I was, I was proud of it. As you can see here, it really starts to pop and come together as you add the yellow highlights in. So the thing about Simpkins' work is it's full of all these fantastical objects and creatures. And I think one day I will attempt to do a more complex uh, arrangement of those types of things. But uh, what I need to do now is just practice on upping my game, so to speak, with the, you know, the individual components that might go into a painting like that one day. So that's it for this video, but I'm going to take this painting and in an upcoming video, I'm going to be adding some waves and a ship in the background and, and it'll be fun to see the progression of these and uh, just how far I can take this as I continue to document this process. Uh, let me know what you all think about this and uh, don't forget to check out the description for a link to the map that I was referencing in the beginning of the video. All right, everybody take care. Thanks.